already artists, but we are going to focus on today is adding shading to our human hand. Um, there's a few things that we need to consider when we are actually doing this. Um, the first thing is it might be helpful to actually look at a picture of the hand just to get an idea of where the shadows will be. You can also look at your hand just from observation as well. Um, the other thing we need to think about <coughs> is where the light source is going to be in our drawing. So my light source is the moon. Um, in your drawing it could be the sun, it could be a light source, um, like a lamp, something like that. Um, and some of you may not have a, light, a clear light source identified already. Um, in that case, you might just act as if there's a light you know, coming from the viewer onto the hand. For mine though specifically, my light source is up in the top left corner and I need to pay attention to where that is so I know how it will shine onto my object. <clears throat> so if I think about the moon being the light source, it is behind the hand but also far up in the left corner. So the top of my hand is going to be a little bit lighter than the bottom as if there is a shadow underneath. So the areas closest to the light source will be lighter. Um, the areas further away from the light source are going to be darker, so that would be under the hand. Um, so <clears throat> I pulled up a picture of my own hand in the same pose that I had drawn it in, um, holding a paintbrush right over here. And what I am going to do is I always start with the dark shadows first. So if I were to think about where the darkest part of my hand is going to be, it's probably in this little section in here where I see the shadow and then also underneath the finger and underneath the hand. So what I'm going to do is go in with my kind of darker brown and I am going to add a fair amount of shading underneath the hand right in this area here. and just building up layers to get those darker tones. And I'm also going over kind of the fine lines and wrinkles that I see in the hand as well. <coughs> and I'm going to do um, somewhat close to my skin tone color here. So I have a dark brown for my super dark shadows. I'm going to do kind of like a gold for some medium tones and then <coughs> more of a peachy ivory tone for my skin tone um, and all of us are going to be doing different things. Some of you may even do just a black and white drawing with a drawing pencil. You'll apply the same concept um, just with the drawing pencil you're going to get a little bit darker <coughs> in the areas of shadow. Um, the one thing I always encourage students to do is remember that um, you want your it's kind of like a brush stroke. You want the stroke of the pencil going in the direction of um, the hand. So like if I have kind of a circular part of the finger here, I want my color pencil also going in that direction and following the lines of the hand, if that makes sense. Um, I don't want to be going, you know, horizontal straight across. And another way I can do it is kind of use a circular motion so that you can't see, you know, each individual mark of the colored pencil. So what I'm going to do is pay attention to my photo and say, okay, where do I see these really medium tones in here? So I see really dark underneath the hand and then I see some medium tones underneath the wrist as well. So what I'm doing is just going in and adding those right away. And then I see a huge kind of highlight right on the wrist here. It gets a little bit brighter so I just need to leave a little bit of a highlight in that area. <clears throat> Again, my pencil mark making is going in the direction of the wrist as if it's going around the wrist as well. And if I ever want to blend more of that kind of dark brown upwards, um, I'm going to just use a circular motion and do more layers of that color. Um, the wrinkles of my hand are pretty dark as well, so the wrinkles that are on the thumb here, I'm going to darken those quite a bit with my darkest tone. So 
again, I'm just paying attention to where do I see the darkest parts of the shadows first, and then moving on to the medium tones. And even on the top of my thumb here, I see a little bit of a shadow, so I'm going to record that right away with my darker colored pencil. Then go in with my medium tone. A fun thing I think about this assignment, artist, is that you don't necessarily have to do realism. So I could use whatever colors I want. If, you know, if I wanted to do in a, a hand that has all blue tones with just shades of blue, I could absolutely do that. So instead of using my, you know, more skin tones, I could do a dark blue for my shadows, a medium blue for the medium tones, and a lighter blue for the highlights. And then the really bright areas, I'll just leave white. But that's a really cool thing with this assignment is you have the flexibility to do really whatever you'd like for this. So. And I see that there's a little bit of a highlight on the hand right here, so I'm going to leave that area kind of white. So I'm not going to go in and do too much shading in that area. It's looking pretty good so far. I like to go back with my dark tones and kind of define the areas where the really dark shadows are afterwards. You're going to move just like that through the entire drawing. So I think the first step for all of you is just going to be finding your dark, medium, and light tone that you'd like to use. And then to set, depending on you know where the light source is, you've got to think about that before you start drawing. And if you need a picture of the hand, it would be helpful to have that as well right away. I see here it gets super dark where the folds of the skin are, and then um, kind of some darker tones underneath. And there's a highlight on the inside of the finger there too, so I'm going to leave part of that white again right in this general area. Let's make sure I'm not getting too dark with that. And then I see there's a highlight right in this area along the skin folds, so it gets a little bit dark where the folds are and then super light around those. So I'm again going to leave that pretty light. Use a circular motion to blend those colors. I might use kind of more of my ivory tone for my fingernail since it's more of a peachy tone in here. So the light source is also going to affect different other, you know, other parts of the drawing, whether it's the trees, the mountains, and things like that. If my moon is up here, the top of my trees are going to be lighter, and then the bottom of my trees will be darker underneath. So even when I go and do my green tones in the trees, the underside of these will be that dark shadow, or even black in a way, um, blending into dark green, medium green, and light green all the way at the top as if the moon is reflecting off of those items. So I need to just keep all of these things in mind for every little piece while I'm shading. My mountains will be lighter on the left side and darker on the right side as well due to that light source being brighter. And then on the top side of my hand, I see a shadow right in this area too, so I'm going to go in and add that right away. I almost have the hand completed here once I have those medium tones in. Oh, 
always looking back and referencing that photo where I see the shadows and the highlights. shadow along the edge here, but not much. Go ahead and add those medium tones. And before you know it, um, those highlights and shadows are going to make that object appear more round and less flat. So that is the overall goal here, is to give your drawing more depth using that light source. Maintaining the direction of the wrist as I'm adding color. Paying attention to the highlights that I see. Adding some medium tones on the top here. Going in the correct direction. Finishing up with my fingernail. I'm going to do a little bit of a peach tone at the top. And my fingernails are pretty light in this picture, so I'm going to leave actually part of it pretty white. that I just need to touch up and blend, so using super light circular motions if I want to kind of soften that hand a little bit, get rid of some of those texture marks, I just am going to use really light circular motions to do that. If you want to give your hand more dimension, um, where I see kind of the red or peachy tones, I might go in and add a little bit of peach here and there just to Add some more tones in there. It's looking pretty good so far. You can spend quite a bit of time on this artist. All of our hands are going to look a little bit different as far as the poses go, so it'll take some time to really get this right. So be patient with yourselves. Remember that light layers is great rather than just applying so much pressure to your colored pencil right away. Light layers and using multiple layers really helps get that value.